we simply saved up a large supply of cat piss and poo poo. They were furious. In this episode, evil lawyers receive justice themselves. Snake relatives lose all because of greed. Annoying neighbor gets put into place and an abusive bully soldier gets his life destroyed. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. Many moons ago, I was about 10 years old, my aunt was a victim of rape while she was getting a routine surgery from her doctor. Needless to say things got really messed up rather quickly. Now, we don't have a lot of money so the doctors obviously lawyered up to the teeth, and they were trying to dig up anything they could find to paint my aunt in a bad light. She had her one lawyer and soldiered on. A few months into the lawsuit, we noticed random cars kept stealing all of our trash, so she hired a private eye and found it was the defense lawyers doing. Now, their cars were pretty nice. It was always a Range Rover or a black BMW, possible 7 Series because it was quite large. They would pull up and dump the entire contents of the trash in the trunk and speed off. This was unsettling to say the least, so my aunt and mom hatched a brilliant plan. There were four cats in the house so we had a rather large supply cat piss and shit at our disposal. We simply saved up enough of this until the trash was about 75% full of straight up litter. Oh, not bagged either. Just right into the can. It was then topped off with random shredded documents, so it looked like a jackpot of a find. We added a ton of smell good stuff to help hide the stink. Let me clarify that the litter wasn't a full dump from pan to can. It was sifted over a long period of time and collected. The next trash day, like clockwork, they showed up in the black BMW and two people quickly picked up the can and dumped 80% of the contents in the trunk before they realized what was happening. They were furious and started losing their shit at the end of the driveway. To top it all off, my aunt walked outside with a cup of coffee, waved and said good morning all cheerful like. They sped off and we never saw them again. She ended up winning the case about a year later. A bit of a context here. I work as a lawyer for an excellent and famous law firm here in North Italy. My family went through some tough times, in the last nine years, we had to face a brutal divorce with my dad having depleted every single cent he had, one of my aunts was brutally murdered because of a 150 euros cautionary deposit, my granddad was diagnosed with cancer, and some other funny stuff in the middle. Because of that, our bonds became stronger and stronger. Must say that with my family, I mean my mother, her parents and my two aunts. This year, COVID-19 managed to take away both my aunts. I loved them to the moon and back, but one of them was married to a complete douchebag. He always considered himself to be better and smarter than anyone else. And so were his relatives. My aunt and her husband, I refused to call him uncle, lived in a huge house, and so did his brother with her wife and son. He died around seven or eight years ago and left almost everything he could just to his brother and his family, completely ignoring my family, because my granddad is already rich, why should he leave anything to his daughter and grandson, basically. This year, my aunt died of COVID. I was grieving, since I really loved her and cared about her, and I already lost another aunt prior. When the notary called us to read the will, both me and my mother came out completely astonished. She left us just a few things, even though she always said she would have left us basically everything. I don't need the money involved that much, as I already inherited from my other aunt, and my job pays me really well, but my mom always had to struggle, financially speaking. It would have been a huge help, since she doesn't want anything from me. I tried to give her some money in the past, but she always sent them back, being stubborn as she can be. As we walked out, I pulled my cousin by my side to ask him just one thing. Me, hey, cousin, listen. I know it's a dumb question. But, when I last saw her, I brought my aunt a little ceramic bell, shaped as a lady. She held it to her chest all the time. I'd like to have it back, it would be a memory of her. He, smiling at me as if I was the most stupid person on earth, yeah, sure, whatever. I'd what I could do with that stupid bell, take it. But don't expect us to give you anything more, we had to sweat bullets for this will to work. Me. I'm sorry, 
What do you mean? He realized he screwed up, so he just left. My mom went back home, I headed back to my office to take a closer look on my aunt's will. It was bulletproof, and the handwriting was, without any doubt, my aunt's. So, what the hell did he mean? It took me several weeks to finally get the clue. She wrote, as previously mentioned by my husband. It was just this small phrase. My aunt's husband died seven years before, how the hell could he mention anything? Since zombies are still nowhere to be seen and I don't know of any deceased person talking from his grave, I started to scan the whole will once again. Things I never noticed became as clear as the sun. There were missing pages. My aunt numbered them, but the second and fourth page were missing, with sentences left hanging there. Some of the corrections were legit, but looking closely, there were a few of them where the uncertain hand of a 81 years old lady suddenly became stronger and more precise. My aunt's husband was mentioned every time my aunt was talking about money and valuables. He did say something about the savings, but apparently his were to be given to charity and didn't need his approval. Strange, huh? When I talked to my mom and her parents about this, my granddad, who is 74 and still has more strength and lucidity than your average 40 years old dude, mentioned my aunt's husband Will. We don't know what he said, his family never let us even take a look at it and it wasn't worth it to sue them. I went back to the notary the next day, asking to see the will, since I was a relative, he let me, but asked what was going on. I simply said you'll know soon enough. When I read it, I started laughing so hard that even the secretary came to see what the fuck was going on. I rushed back to my office and started to write everything down. Shit was about to hit the fan, but not for my family. After a few days, me, my mom, her parents and my aunt's relatives met once again in front of the notary. I already told him what was happening, I could see him trying not to look disgusted as my aunt's husband's beloved ones walked in. Notary started with, we are all here. Apparently, Op has some things to discuss with us, concerning inheritances. You could hear a pin drop a mile away. I stood up and opened my bag. My family was smiling, my relatives were staring daggers from their eyes. I said, as we all know, Auntie left everything to you. Nothing is wrong here, as she didn't have any direct relationship with anyone in this room. What is wrong, is the reason behind it. I handed a copy of the will to everyone, with some parts being highlighted. I said, as you can see, pages are missing. Some corrections are different, to say the least. But, most importantly, my uncle is cited quite often. This led me to his will. At this point, my relatives turned whiter than snow. My cousin tried to stop me, telling me I couldn't possibly use my uncle's will, as more than five years passed. The notary told him that I totally could, as the allowance to contest a will is 10 years. He kept silent. I continued, he left my aunt everything he had if she would have left it to you after she died. So, I want to let you know that you just lost all your rights on my uncle's will, and you are all to be sued for false declaration in public deed and attempted fraud. You see, in our state it's not legal to make such a kind of contract. They started screeching and screaming, calling me names and wishing me an obviously pleasant and late death. All because one of them wasn't clever enough to shut his mouth. Now they lost everything they had, their farm, their money, their house and their cars were all my uncles. They have been forced to leave the house they were living in, all their bank accounts have been blocked and even their farm had to be closed, since it was also my uncle's previous activity. The correction and change of ownership was actually very precise and some items, jewelry, ingots, cash, are now mysteriously missing, they even have to pay for an equal value. They had a little empire, but managed to lose everything over greed and stupidity. Ladies and gentlemen, please, listen to me. If you want to screw with someone, at least have the courtesy of not doing it to a lawyer. This happened a few years ago. My neighbor started parking on the street behind my car, like literally inches, for no apparent reason. My neighbor has a driveway which was empty, and also lived two houses down the street. I don't have a driveway, so on-street parking is a must for me. So, after a few weeks, 
I asked if it was necessary to park so close when there was literally no cars on the street for over a quarter mile. He said no, but there's no law against it with a big poo-poo eating grin on his face. A few weeks pass by, and my car gets hit because someone thought there was enough room to clear as his truck blocked the view of my car entirely. I see this happen, but unfortunately can't get a model or license plate number. I find my neighbor's email address, because I really didn't feel like talking to him, and asked him again, if he could just park further down the road, closer to his house. He replied, nope. Suck it up. I had lived here for quite a long time, and never had any issues with him or any other neighbor. I keep to myself, never make noise, don't have any noisy pets or parties, etc. His truck has his business name on it. Googled it. Find out it's his own business. Lots of Yelp reviews, BBB rating, etc. All these links point to his website. I go to check his website, it doesn't load up. I head over to a domain registry and see that the domain isn't registered. I snag it. Before I think of what to do with it, I google the owner's name and find out he's been convicted of murdering a child 20-ish years ago. I find a handful of links that details his story rather explicitly. I copy slash paste all those links into an email to him, a throwaway account so he can't just reply to me as I deleted it afterward. Said something like well, if you want to be a jerk for no reason, I just bought your business domain. Here's all the links I plan on posting on it. I don't have to list your business name because all of your business listings across the internet have this URL pointing to it. Keep parking like a jerk. Yes, it's legal, but you are willfully doing this just to annoy me. I legally bought your domain, and can legally link these articles. Park behind me again, and I'll launch it. Within an hour his truck was moved into his driveway. He asked me for the domain, and I told him, when either you move, or I move, I'll hand it over. Until then it'll remain offline. This happened last week, not a few years ago. He was originally charged with capital murder, but his lawyer convinced him of a plea deal for manslaughter because they had way more than enough to convict him of capital murder. I was working as a civilian with the US military overseas and I lived off base in an apartment complex popular among the US military. One morning I accidentally hit another soldier's vehicle. Upon exiting the vehicle I noticed that both our vehicles were what you could call a hoopty. A hoopty is an old car that is pretty beat up that has been passed around from service to service member and they generally sell for $1,000 to $2,000. I also recognized that I was at fault for the accident. It was a very minor accident. His rear bumper was dented in slightly. But I could hear both our cars still running. I approached the driver who had already gotten out and he was in uniform. I apologized and said if it was all right with him, I'd like to negotiate a payment that I will pay him in cash and we don't involve the authorities. I wanted to keep this simple. I'll be honest, the accident was so minor I expected him to say, nah man it's good, but even if he wanted some money I'd have paid him. I have always been of the opinion, that if you have a fender bender and can negotiate agreeable terms between both the parties, it's best to not involve insurance slash police. He told me he wanted to call the police, I said we could call the police or we could go on base together and I could give him $300. He said that wasn't enough. So I upped my offer to $500. He proceeded to punch me in the face. It was a sucker punch, he got into his car and took off and in the process nearly ran me over. Now I had a black box in my car which recorded everything. I went to the provost marshal office on base. That's our police station for the military. Reported the accident and the assault and showed the MP the footage. Which they used his license plate to track him down. I was also asked if I wanted to involve the local authorities slash press criminal charges off base. Honestly, I felt like the soldier would learn his lesson if I let UMCJ, the military court basically, handle this and I said, not at this time. I was told it was an option. The end result was that the soldier in question, got 60 days of extra duty, reduction in rank, and forfeited a portion of his paycheck. Essentially if he dealt with that, this would have been the end of the whole ordeal. Honestly, at this point I assumed our little ordeal was over. Well a few days after his punishment was decided on, which was not long after the incident itself, 
I was in the commissary, grocery store on base, shopping when the soldier who assaulted saw me and began to insult me. I told him he needed to calm down, that he should learn his lesson, he told me I was a pussy who didn't know how to take a punch. I reminded him that I held back on destroying his life, he told me he's already been punished and I can't touch him again. A store employee witnessed the entire encounter and I got the employee detail and reported this interaction to his command. His commander told me he had been ordered to not interact with me and would take action. His commander also recommended me to involve the local authorities, since this soldier obviously isn't learning his lesson. So I did. I contacted an attorney. The attorney was unsure if we could successfully sue the soldier and said he would need a cash payment to take the case. I was mad and I wanted to teach this guy a lesson. I agreed, it was not cheap. To keep this story short, we ended up in a court off base. We presented our evidence. The soldier in question had decided to represent himself. He had outbursts in court several times. The judge ended up granting me a judgment of approximately 50,000 US dollars. When the judgment was given, the soldier called the judge a son of bitch, and that the army would cover for him. So the judge changed his judgment to 80,000 US dollars and then asked me if I also wanted to press charges against this soldier in criminal court. Honestly, it was obvious this guy wasn't going learn a lesson, I told the judge I wanted to pursue criminal charges in addition to the judgment. My lawyer later advised me that if I ever wanted to see the money, I should pursue an international hold. With my judgment it's likely that a judge would grant me an international hold. An international hold would mean that this soldier would not be allowed to leave the country, until I was paid my 80,000 US dollars. He also told me that according to the agreement between the US military and the host country, the US military would honor the international hold. Basically, the US military would not protect him or move him out of country to avoid punishment. By this point, I had paid my lawyer thousands of dollars, and I honestly didn't feel like paying thousands of dollars and getting nothing for it. So I said yes, I wanted to go forward with the international hold. About a month later the international hold was granted, and the US military was informed of this. Two months after that, the criminal case was over and the soldier was sentenced to 90 days in jail. By this point the soldier had been moved onto the base into his barracks by his commander. I remember the day I was informed the MPs handed him over to the local authorities to begin his 90-day jail sentence. Did I mention he still owed me 80,000 US dollars? I heard nothing for a year, and then one day I get a call from his commander, his commander wants me to make a statement in regards to the case. I go in and make the statement. During the statement, I find out the US military was in the process of chaptering the soldier out of the US military. The commander also informed me that he was close to coming up with the money to pay me, so he could have the international hold lifted. The commander also asked me if my lawyer would be willing to make a statement. I contacted my lawyer who also made a statement about the facts of the case. A few weeks later his ex-wife contacted me, when this all started I knew he was married, guess his wife decided to divorce him. She informed that her ex-husband had the money and needed the details on how to pay me. I provided her the details, and a few days later I got the payment and contacted his ex-wife to inform her I had been paid. She then asked me to send a receipt, so he could have the international hold lifted and returned to the States. I asked her how he got the money, she said he maxed out his credit, and also had family help out. Also during this conversation, I had found out the army had chaptered him out of the military. I sent her the receipt and that was the last I ever heard from his side. I took his 80,000 US dollars and bought myself a brand new car and used the rest of the money to put down on an investment property. Thank you for watching Royal AI. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive future episodes. Share your experience in the comments, or tell us what you think of these stories.